Okay, so let's now focus on getting some terrain generated, all right? So to work with PDG, uh, we're going to be working with HDAs and a specific node inside of PDG called the HDA processor. In order to work with these nodes, we need to uh, create SOP level HDAs, all right? So let's jump into Houdini and talk about this more and get a ter terrain generator created. All righty, let's go into, well, actually, let's go and create a new... Uh, geometry node and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a SOP HDA or yeah SOP HDA label for this particular node. Now if you've taken uh, my previous PDG course that's free on side effects uh, website you'll see a very similar pattern. We're basically creating SOP level HDAs. All right currently our PDG landscape HDA is an object level HDA that's because we went and created a HDA at this level at the OBJ level. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to create HDAs down here at the SOP level. All right, so we're inside of this geometry node. So we're inside of the in, in SOP land, if you will. Okay, so to start these out, you want to drop down a sub network here. Okay, and we are going to call this the IP terrain generator. All right, cool. And inside of here, this is where we can go and start to place all of our geometry or anything that we're going to create. Whatever we want this HDA to do is going to happen inside of here. And so what I want to do is I want to create a height field to start with. So this this node basically is going to start off the whole process. Alrighty. And let me hit F on the keyboard to frame it. There we go. So now we have our height field. Now, when we're working with terrains inside of Unity, uh, we need to put in very specific values here. So I'm going to keep this you know relatively small, just well, actually, let's actually make a really large terrain because, you know, let's talk about creating really large terrains. Um, in this case, what I want to do is create a terrain that is of size 4097 by 4097. So if you go and look up the Houdini Engine documentation, all right, so I'm going to go and launch a browser here. And you go and open up something like Google here and you just type in Unity Houdini Engine Docs something to that effect, right? You'll get the search hit and you'll be able to go and find out more information about terrains. All right, so if I select the terrain option here, you can see we have this table here of all of the accepted sizes. All right, so it just needs to be a power of two plus one. All right, so that's why we're using that 4097. All right, so this is a pretty big terrain. All right, so with that created, let's go and just drop down some noise like so. So let's do some height field noise over here. Alrighty. Perfect. And let's turn it on. There we go. Cool. All right. So what I want to do is make the element size a little bit bigger here. All right. Maybe we'll go a little bit taller right now. We're at about 500. So let's do like 1500. I mean, this is a pretty big terrain. So you can see it's even taking a little bit long on the cook. It, if you want to actually speed that up, you could put the grid spacing while you're working at least to four. But when you put this into the Houdini engine, it needs to be at a grid spacing of two. All right. So that's actually looking pretty cool. Uh, let's do a little bit of uh, distortion and then we'll call it good for our terrain generator. All right. I just want to get the general idea across here. Uh, in later sections, we will go and make this look like an awesome terrain with awesome, cool features and textures and lots of layers and foliage and stuff all generated with PDG. All right, let's just get the general pipeline down. Okay, so now we have a terrain and we are distorting it a little bit. Let's actually make the the curl a little bit bigger. Yeah, something like that. Just to give, you know, some interesting look so it doesn't just look like noise applied to a height map. All right, so um, I'm also thinking maybe the it's a little tall, so let's just do a thousand. Yeah, I think that'll be cool. All right, that's good test material right there. All right, so I'm, I always like to go and put a null node down here just to indicate that this is the end. So we'll say out terrain, like so. Very cool. All right, with that done, let's go and right click on this and say create digital asset. And I'm going to do my usual naming convention here. And we're going to capitalize these guys and then save it into our project. Now this is very important. I want it to look into this folder. So I need to make sure all my HDAs that PDG is going to be referencing 
exist in this HDA folder in my project. Okay, so I'm going to hit accept and accept, and that will pop open the type properties window for this guy. And this allows us then to go and add properties to it. All right, so let's just add something like, I don't know, the let's do the amplitude and the element size here. And then maybe we will uh, promote uh, all this noise stuff. So we'll do amplitude. We'll call this noise amp. And this one will be the distortion amplitude. So we'll say distort amp like so. And let's pull out the element size for this guy. Let's also put a little separator in between those two guys just to clean up the UI a little bit. There we go. All right, so that's the element size. So this is going to be noise, element size, and maybe the offset. We'll call it good there. I don't want to get too fancy with all the parameters just yet. Okay, so there we go. We'll let that compile and make sure that we set this back to two. Remember, that's required by Unity. For our terrains to work. All right, so there we go. Cool. So now I've got an HDA that generates some terrain really quickly. All right, so let's jump up and out and one more time, and then we're going to dive into our top network over here. And what I want to do, I'm going to get rid of the wedge node and I'm going to create an HDA processor. Now, these HDA processors allow us to assign an HDA file to basically fire off or execute when it when PDG gets to this particular node. Okay, so let's go and get that particular HDA. So you could always hit this little button right here and say, we want to load up the IP terrain generator. And you'll see that it'll automatically set this to job because Houdini knows that we are in our project. All right, very cool. So with that, we basically have an HDA processor that is ready to go, okay? And I want to make sure that on my HDA up here, instead of dollar hip, I want this to be dollar job. All right, that basically represents my working directory. So if I middle mouse click on this, you'll see, and it'll present you with the current path that that dollar job is set to. And then you just middle mouse click it again, and it gets back to the global variable. All right, and then you can always go and double check your HDA file here as well. And there you go, so you can see it's, it's all hooked up properly. What's also happened is the PDG network or the top network node here is exposing all the HDA parameters right here. So you notice this extra tab was created when we assigned our HDA. Super cool, right? And so this allows us to now change these values and we can, we can expose these to our actual PDG HDA as well. Awesome. So with, the, with all that created, I'm going to come in here and we're going to do a test cook. So you can always go and right click on this node and just say cook selected node. Alrighty. And I'm going to wait for this to run and I'll be right back. All right. So that didn't take very long, like maybe 10 seconds. And what we've got is a new terrain. So let's talk about this a little bit more before we close out this lecture. So if I double click this little dot, which are actually referred to as work items. All right. So this is a work item that created one work item because we have one terrain that's being generated from this HDA. You can see that this output, has been output to our geo folder. All right, so this is a very core concept to uh, PDG. So if I were to go and look at that, so let's go to our project. So if I go to intro to PDG and go to the geo folder, you can see it actually created this bgo.sc file. This actually contains our landscape or our terrain that we created. All right, and that name, that particular name was produced down here, this output file name. So this PDG dir. All right, if we double click this, you can see it doesn't actually expand, but that PDG dir is that working directory that we exposed to our HDA. You could also come up here and instead of dollar job, you could also say PDG dir. It's a global variable. All right, very cool. So let's take a look at some more information here. So it's output that BGO file. The cook time was 14 seconds. All right, and we have a bunch of parameters that are on this. Now, one thing we should do at this point now that we've got a HD processor that is cooking something. All right, let's jump up and out and let's turn off our SOP HDAs. You can see that, you know, here inside of uh, Houdini, we don't actually see the result. If I click on this little guy, I don't see my terrain. All right. It's just currently being baked out to that folder right there. So the way to 
display it is to drop down a geo node, and I usually call this the PDG viz node, because what we can do is we can utilize an internal variable that PDG is producing for us, all right, inside of a file node. So if I go and drop down a file node in here now, and if I come up here and do two back ticks and type out at PDG output, like so, you can see that output is our terrain. How cool is that? So now we have a way of displaying all the steps in our particular HDA processor. So when I select this guy, the PDG viz will show whatever I have selected by selecting this little dot here or the work item. Okay, so with that, we are underway. Let's go and talk about setting up the erosion now. So I want to make another step in here. So this there's always a good idea to, to name these two because remember these show up inside of the asset link. We're going to call this the terrain uh, generator. That's that step in our pipeline. The next step that we want to do is we want to erode the terrain. Okay, so let's take a look at that in the next lecture.